the only photographs we maintain in the database are those photographs which are gained at the point of arrest. So that individual knows they're being photographed when they're arrested. That photograph is part of the arrest record, a normal criminal justice record that is stored here and then shared appropriately. So mug shots? Yes. DMV records, driver's license records? No. Facebook, Google, LinkedIn, any of the sites that, that have pictures? No. But do you see a scenario, not now, it's clear you can't do it now or you wouldn't do it now, in the future where you could begin to store Facebook pictures? No, I can never envision that for our system. Is the reason because these other photos are unreliable or is there a civil liberties reason? I think there's certainly a civil liberties reason that we don't do that. We can't assume that just because you have an account here or there that you've consented to relinquishing your privacy rights. We have to protect everyone's privacy rights equally. I know, but if you're just out there on Facebook saying, here I am and here's who I am, wh what are you actually protecting by telling me that you won't go to Facebook in pursuit of a, of a criminal? Well, for our system, we're protecting the integrity of the system, that we know so who is So it's not in civil liberties in that case. In that case, it's, you, are not, you can't absolutely verify the identity. Absolutely not. If you were just to take a photograph you got off the internet anywhere, I don't know who that is. Could a local agency s send you what, what you might call a dragnet picture from a, like, like a sports event or an airport? Uh, could they just send you a bunch of pictures and say, is anybody in your system in this picture? We would have to see the exact investigative need they were trying to accomplish. Did, did they believe that terrorist was in that photograph okay. is, is, is a, one of those people suspected of being that terrorist. That would be an appropriate use. But just sending photographs of folks that happen to be sitting in a particular area, that's not an appropriate use because you have no suspicion regarding any of those people. Under what circumstances would you do facial recognition in a political rally? Let's say you had a person who was suspected uh, you're looking for a person who might cause harm to the person who's giving, who's speaking at that rally. Mm -hmm. So okay. you, you would have a suspect or someone you're looking for who is suspected of perhaps causing harm to a political candidate. I guess the worry is that, that it goes back to the question of the slippery slope. Will the government be spying on us in that way? We conduct our investigations and our activities under long-standing rules and regulations, starting first with the Constitution, then the Attorney General guidelines, then federal law, and then our own investigative policies.